Welcome back to the podcast. We are in a different setting than normal. We are actually up here in D.C. We made a trip up to see Lee here, uh, but we are actually in the DAR, President General's Assembly Room, so that's where we're at right now. Um, and we got a tour of this venue actually for the first time, and I'm obsessed. Already cannot wait to do a wedding, maybe even with Lee. Um, but yeah, I wanted to just introduce you to um, listeners here. Um, today's episode is going to be very special, so I am really, really pumped that you are here with me. Well, we've been planning it for so long. I know, we really have. We need to make this happen. So if you want to just go over, I know, like, I know you, but if you want to share just a little bit about you, the company you work with, and, like, your maybe even your connection to getting us this lovely place to host the podcast. Absolutely. So, hi, everyone. I'm Lee Maltby. I am the DMV lead planner for all the dainty details, and I am just so excited to be in this building right now with you all doing this podcast because it is bringing all of my worlds together at the moment. So I have been a daughter of the American Revolution for 15 years, um, 12 of those here in D.C., and we are at our beautiful national headquarters um, right on the mall, block from the White House, uh, beautiful views of the Washington Monument, and it's just gorgeous. And anytime I get to talk about this venue and yeah. be here and is just so special to me from both a personal and a professional lens. So I get yeah. to bring all those together today. So all the dainty details, we are a wedding planning company that specializes in partial and full service planning. So we focus on design, um, making sure that we are cre curating that superstar team of vendors for our clients. Um, we do not do day of coordination. Um, we Bless. do what we, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but we do what is called wedding management for those couples who may think they want day of coordination, but really it's more like, as soon as you sign the contract with us, we focus on making sure that you're getting good vendor recommendations. We review your contracts to make sure there are no red flags, mm -hmm. but also yeah. to make sure that we know exactly what's going on and what all of your restrictions are on True. the day, which is super important, especially in a historic venue like this. Yeah. And then... Oh, yeah. um, we also have monthly check-in calls with our clients who are just wedding management, just to make sure that you are going through that checklist. There are so many details <laughs> of wedding planning, and we are here as your resource. So we don't do day of coordination, we do wedding management. And then um, partial service, partial planning service, is anything in addition that you want to that for example, if you want us to find your vendors for you, you want us to do your design, um, we can either do a virtual design or a full design. Yeah. Um, or we can do things like handling your RSVPs. <laughs> no. Oh, I didn't know you all did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So the partial planning is kind of an a la carte option. Okay. So if there is any part of wedding planning that just stresses you out, we can take that on for you, and that would fall under our partial planning services. And then, of course, full planning, we handle everything for you. All yeah. the nuts and bolts, we help you find all of your vendors. Um, we do your full design for you. We're at every single meeting. So that really is for the couple who maybe just don't have the time to yeah. do their wedding planning because Lord knows we are all strapped for time these days. Mm -hmm. um, and also for clients who really, they're excited to get married and they have a vague vision of what they're looking for, mm -hmm. but they have a hard time articulating it or they just don't really know. And that's where yeah. we come in and through our discovery process, asking a lot of questions, getting to know them, their story, their, their passions as people, not just... Mm -hmm focused on the wedding but the passions or, exactly yeah um that's where we get to come in and do all of the the fun design work and uh really make your full planning process seamless yeah 
Well, I just learned a lot about <laughs> you guys just in that. Like, I had no idea you did all that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. And I know we've only done actually one wedding technically with your team yeah. last year. Uh, we have another one this year. Yes. I'm so excited. One of my um, favorite that I'm super, super I excited for this year. I'll say, Joanna yes. Woody, if you're listening to this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so pumped. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, so we uh, are so looking forward to working with you guys again. And would love to come up to D.C. more. I mean, mm-hmm. We're just so inspired. Uh, we did it. I know we did a tour earlier. Mm-hmm. It was very, like, I feel like rushed because we wanted to film, of course. Yeah. But just seeing all the inspiration that you have up here, it's just Phenomenal. Like as a designer, like for weddings, this is just, I'm sure so inspiring to you. I, it is. Well, and, um, I know that you had Amanda, the venue coordinator for, for DAR on an earlier podcast. And I think something that is unique about DAR specifically is that yes, it is a historic venue. And so you get all of that charm and, just historic beauty from the venue itself as well as being on the mall and all these great views right but it is so versatile and that can be hard when you're looking at a historic venue in DC is can you go in any direction or do you have to go more towards the simple side or do you have to go more towards the glamorous side so that you're fitting with what the venue is and this venue allows you to really go wherever you want. Yeah. Well, and I know, like, just with trends and everything, I know, like, your design mind, I just, I love your <laughs> aesthetic for all your weddings. Um, would you say there's a special, like, I'm trying to think of the word, like, what is your specialty with mm-hmm. design and planning? Like, do you have one that you're like, this is my type of wedding? Absolutely. So I will say, so we have... Um, Our company owner, Mallory Rood, who primarily works down in the Charlottesville, Central Virginia area, um, she is fantastic. Her aesthetic, just in general, is very um, country chic and, um, you know, that vintage elegance. Mm -hmm. And so she loves weddings like that embrace that core structure um almost cottage core in a way yeah oh my gosh (laughs) yes yes Yes. um and then we have alexa legas petroff who is another daughter um as well who helps with the dc area Mm -hmm. the dmb area and um i would say she's more on the modern side of things in her aesthetic very chic simple lines yeah wants um that's just her aesthetic design wise more I can see that and then um for me I am all about color (laughs) as you can tell um all about color over the top ideas and really finding those ways to focus on bringing your personal passions and your passions as a couple into your wedding but in a way that is still elegant and doesn't look like it's just taken off some Pinterest board somewhere. Yeah. Well, and I know, so today's episode specifically, we're going to dive into a topic that we've talked about Mm -hmm. um, just like in talking on Instagram and all things. But when you're looking at planning a wedding and you are trying to make it personalized, sometimes you can get in a box of like, well, this is a trend right now. So I love that you are so intentional with your couples on like what makes it them and just bringing in that personal touch makes it really unique. Yeah. And to be clear, our entire team is really focused on that. When we say all the dainty details, we're not just talking about, you know, the logistics details and design details. We're, we're really focused on making sure that all of those personalizations happen in a way that fits you as a couple, not just your design. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's very true. And I know we, we have a lot to get through, so I'm going to get started on <laughs> okay. the Let's main go. topic, which is plus size fashion. Yes. I have always been a plus size girl. Me too. Me and too. there's just certain things you have to accept yeah in you know in that realm yeah. and so, being a plus side bride is such a I, 
I don't want to see it. <laughs> it's it's such a mind fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, and it just messes with your brain because um, until very recently, especially when you're talking about bridal gowns and bridal mm-hmm. fashion, very, very few designers were designing for plus size bodies yeah. and had plus size models in their gowns. And like actual plus size actual models, plus size, not yes. like a size 10. <laughs> right, exactly. And so we're talking like size 16 and up. Like, yes. Yeah. And so it's just, we have all this societal pressure on us when it comes to weddings and mm-hmm. I can't wait to delve in more. I'm sorry, I know. I'm already yeah. going. <laughs> No, but like I, you were more recent than I, mm. um, like a bride looking for a dress yeah. and it's just, it's a different it is. way to go about it. And so we have actually, we've talked about it in the past, but I have some questions that I found that were like Google search, like yeah. the high ranked ones. Mm-hmm. So I just want to dive into just some things that if I were getting married right now, obviously like yes, we could probably be healthier and I would probably do <laughs> something and sure. actually stick to a diet and, right. you know, try to get healthier for a wedding. But this is who I am. This is right. just where I'm at right now. Yeah. And accepting that it just planning a wedding around, this is me, how am I showing up? Yeah. And so I would love to dive in some questions with you, just get your thoughts on just all the aspects. So let's yeah. go through some questions um, to start out with. Um, and this is like a heavy hitter. But how, as a plus-size bride, can I be confident in, like, wedding design and maybe even, like, specifically on the dress, but then also tying that specific dress in because it is, Mm -hmm. depending on, and we'll get into this, but, like, what you're trying to hide to feel confident. How is that going to fit your wedding Mm -hmm. theme and, like, your vision? Absolutely. So I think first, and I know we're going to dive in more to mindset because mindset is behind everything for the yep. for the plus size bride. And and also, gentlemen out there, I don't want to exclude you too. My husband is plus sized as yep. well. So plus size grooms, a lot of the, especially the mindset piece is going to pertain to you too. Yes, so I don't I don't want to discriminate on that. This is uh, true. Women aren't the only ones who are insecure about their bodies. It is true. We're all maybe more verbal about it. There we it, go. Yes, but. absolutely. And again, we have that more societal pressure on us. Correct. Right? To look a certain way, especially on our wedding days. Yep. Especially on our wedding days. Yep. So as far as confidence goes, um, I think you need to, f- I would say, let's switch it up a little bit. And instead of saying, what are we trying to hide? What are we trying to accentuate? What do we love about our bodies? Because mm. I've, you know, I've been plus size my entire life too. There are certain body parts that I want to accentuate. Um, but I think to being confident, especially when you're going through not only your design process, but also picking out your dress. There's a few general tips that I would give. And um, as Emily said, I just got married in January 2023. So I've recently gone through (laughs) this whole process. Um, The first thing is, you know, think about what your overall vision is for your wedding. You know, are you more of a garden bride, right? Okay, well, if that's the case, then you can do more loose and flowy fabrics. Yeah. Um, whereas if you're doing maybe a historic venue like this or, um, you know, a beautiful ballroom or something along those lines that's a little bit more glam, you're probably looking at more fabrics that are satin-based, more structured. Right. So... Think about it in that sense. And I would also say don't be afraid to talk to your planner about this because we mm-hmm. also follow bridal fashion trends a lot too. Yeah. Um, so don't be afraid to talk to your your planner about these things as well. Um, and then the other piece is take a hard look at who's around you and who you Ooh. have close to you, especially when you're dress shopping. Yes. Especially when you're dress shopping. This is not the time to have Auntie Sue with you who makes you feel 
horrible every time very you see nitpicky, her. Very, yeah, yeah, is, critical. is constantly making comments about yeah. your body or about losing weight for the wedding or something like that. Give Auntie Sue another job, okay? Mm-hmm. Have your cheering squad with you. Your people who are going to ooh and ah and give you constructive criticism, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Because constructive criticism is very important Correct. when it comes to wedding dress shopping. But focus on those people who make you feel your best, even when you're looking your worst. Yeah. No, that honestly, that's a hot take. It, <laughs> I, I love that. Well, and I take this from personal experience because um, however much I love my mother, um, she is has always been very body critical and of herself as well as others. And so, um, you know, I was lucky I had the excuse of she lived halfway across the country. <laughs> so I didn't have to bring her dress shopping, but I purposely chose people who are around me who would provide that constructive criticism of, no, I don't really like, I don't know that that's doing what you want it to do. Right. (laughs) Right. Or, uh, but also who hyped me up and just made me feel like a gorgeous bride, no matter what I had on. Yeah. Well, and I know like, well, my next question is like tips for actually showing up Mm. in the choosing dress process. But yeah, like you said, having the people that are going to lovingly and respectfully tell you, yes, that style's not it for you. Right. We need to go elsewhere. And right. and honestly, have an open mind. Mm-hmm. Like I oh, remember absolutely. like if I could go back, I, I mean, I love my dress. I really do love my, my wedding dress. But if I could go back and change some things, I think I would go all out and do like a big ball gown. Because I think it looked really good on me. It flattered mm-hmm. me, that dress that I tried yeah. on. But I didn't do it because I'm like, no, it just it's too much. Like, right. I, it, not my personality. So right. just having an open mind, try dresses that maybe you're like, oh, that wouldn't be me. Yeah. You never know. It yeah. might actually look really good and you feel beautiful. But having the right people is definitely critical. Absolutely, having the right people. And then just like anything within the wedding planning process, do your research. Yes. Okay. So what I mean by that is you don't have to be an expert on fabrics or design or anything like that. That's what your bridal attendants are going to be there for at Mm -hmm. the different bridal shops. But do your research on designers who Mm -hmm. have extensive um, collections for the plus size bride. Um, Not everyone does. And a a lot of them... I will say a lot of them who say that they provide extended sizes are still designing for a sample size body. Amen to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so look at look at um, look at the designers. Do your research. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally, I have always and some of my favorite brands for plus size brides is um, Morley um, by Madeline Gardner. Um, that's personally who I went with (laughs) for my dress, but, um, she was a forerunner in designing specifically for the plus size body, um, essence of Australia. They have come into the market, the U S market in the last decade or so. Um, but again, they have always had that designing for the plus size body and the sample size body in mind. Um, so those are two of my favorites for sure. Um, and ones I always recommend. So do your research into, into designers who you not only like their designs on the sample size models, but that you like their designs on the plus size models too. Right. And then look at trunk shows. Where Mm -hmm. are those designers going to be doing trunk shows at, um, in your area? Because that's a great, time not only to get a discount (laughs) on those designers which lord knows we can all use uh some extra money for (laughs) for the wedding budget um but it will also tell you what um what bridal boutiques are have those really good relationships with those designers as well um and who will more than likely also have someone um on staff who, or their staff will be trained in being able to service plus size brides. 
And um, that's the other thing too, when you're making your appointment for your bridal appointment, don't be afraid to tell them, I am a plus size bride. I want somebody who understands how to help me pick out yeah. the dress that I want. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, I know it can be kind of shameful, again, because we have all this societal <laughs> pressure on us. Yeah. But this is a day that you want to look and feel your best. Yeah. When at the end of the day, they're just there to sell you a dress. Right. And not all bridal shops are created equal. So like exactly. Yep. Sometimes they, they're they not going to serve you well. They might yep. as well be the Aunt Susie. Absolutely. And you don't want that. Right. So, yeah, no, the, those are really good. Um, and I didn't know that they, like, I'm going to link the shops that you listed because <laughs> that's, like, genius. Yeah, those designers. That was very yeah. helpful. Uh, so diving into, like, let's say you're there, mm -hmm. what are some, like, I know there's lots of cuts. And yeah. I know I'm a wedding vendor and I probably should know all of them. I don't. <laughs> um, I know the the cuts for me of, like, the shapes of the dress, like, mm -hmm. what looks best on me. Yeah. But what are some traditional, like, like the basic dress yeah. shapes that mm -hmm. you would recommend? So this is where I'm going to, we can talk about what you want to try and hide or what you want to kind of disguise. Yeah, yeah, your insecurities with your with different areas of your body. But I also want to talk about what areas we want to highlight. So again, yeah. trying to figure, trying to switch that mindset from a negative to a positive. Yeah. Um, so let's let's start with your insecurities, right? So um, we can use me the, if you want. No, 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 no. I, I will use myself too. Um, I think the first inspiration, and I, this goes for any any bride, is look at your closet that you have currently, right? Mm -hmm. What what type of dresses are you? If you wear dresses on the regular, what type of dresses are you? more drawn to? Are they more flowy and kind of swing style, like what you have on? My golden honey <laughs> outfit today. <laughs> exactly. I have more of an A-line on, so it's not, not as poofy. It kind of hugs the body, but it goes out more in mm -hmm. the skirt. Um, or, I mean, and there are plenty of plus size women uh, who love a pencil skirt, right? Yeah. And because you got to show off that booty. Um, so, Look at your closet and see what you're most comfortable in, and then apply that to your wedding your wedding dress and your wedding fashion. Um, that is something that I think a lot of people don't think about. Um, and I know personally, I used that tip. I've given that tip to a lot of brides who yeah. think like, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I yeah, didn't even I've never think even thought about of that. that. I'm like, right. you're not going to find that on Pinterest or Google. Right. That's exactly. amazing. Um, and then... So if we think about kind of some typical areas that us plus size ladies are insecure about, for me, it's my tummy area. That would be right. Online. I've got an apron belly. <laughs> I, I've always loved the silhouette of a mermaid dress, but I knew that a straight mermaid was not going to be the right fit if I wanted to feel confident and secure on my day. Yep. Um, so... That that style for me, a, a true mermaid where it's very tight, hugs every single curve until it gets to about your knees and then flares out, yep. um, was not going to be the right fit for me. But what I did was I thought, uh, or I, I looked at dresses that were kind of a semi-mermaid. They were halfway between like a, a mermaid and, and an alien. Yeah, like a fit and flare. And so, and then the other piece was... Um, think about details, you know, mm -hmm. um, ruching, beading, lace, all of these things can help distract from areas that we don't want to necessarily bring attention to, especially right. if it's an all over pattern. Mm -hmm. So, um, for me, I, I also really wanted a ball gown for the ceremony. So I did an overskirt. Um, I did a ball gown overskirt yes. and then I had kind of a fit and flare dress underneath that had beating from the top down <laughs> on yeah. it all over the place. And what that did is, first of all, I ordered it in a size up because tailoring makes all the difference, especially on us plus size ladies. Yes. Tailoring makes all the difference. And men, 
I'm going to say that to you too for your suits. Yes. Please. Tailoring, tailoring, tailoring. Yes. <laughs> um, so for me, what I did was I focused on beading all over the place, and then I did a fit and flare, and then I did, picked an overskirt that was a ball gown overskirt for the ceremony purposes. Um, I think if you're uncomfortable with your arms, um, you know, especially that upper arm area that yep. we get. That would be me as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um Sleeves are always a great option, whether those are detachable or stay on. Even um, in the summer, right? Even like in the summer, absolutely. Hot. No, it's not. It, it's for looks. It, it is, but I promise a lace sleeve in the summer, even a half sleeve. Yeah. Beautiful, helps hide the the wiggle. <laughs> it contains. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Um, and it just adds a little bit more to your dress as well. Um, but also, oh my gosh, I love the cape trend. Can we keep the cape trend, please? I kind of like it too. I love it. I love it so much, especially in lieu of a veil. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's so, so amazing. So the cape trend can also help you a lot with that yes. upper arms area specifically, mm -hmm. but it still leaves your arms free. Yeah. Um, so highly recommend that as well. The bolero jacket has gone out of style at this point. That's very like 90s, early aughts um, in terms of bridal fashion. But there are some amazing um, versions of that that you can find on Etsy or in bridal shops now um, and have custom made for you. Okay. And then as terms of length, so length is a fun one. <laughs> to yeah, I'm play like, with, I don't right? I also don't love my <laughs> legs necessarily. So. Yeah. So again, you want to think about the design of your wedding, your venue. Um I personally love my legs. Like this one part of me that I I enjoy. So I would have if I had done an, a third change <laughs> Which isn't as uncommon as you think. I was going to say, um, <laughs> reception changes I happen. probably would have done a short dress. But um, especially if you don't, so you want, when you're thinking about the length of your dress, you want to think about um, your venue, Your are you out on the grass or are you on stone or concrete? Um, if you're, those are if you're outside. If you're inside, a little bit more choice, but again, you want to think about what does that length look like right mm -hmm. um shorter dresses are really popular for reception dresses and reception changes because you can dance and have fun but again think about like do you want it to be more of a fit and flare or a swing dress which is where think 1940s yeah for that right mm -hmm. um you know how do you want that to to look um but you really want to think about the length in terms of fitting your venue and fitting your design. Again, if you're having a, a garden wedding that is a little bit more low key, you can probably get away with a high low or even a yeah. um, cocktail length or, or tea length, not cocktail length, sorry, tea yeah. length. <laughs> but again, these are all things that if you buy a dress that is long floor length, you can have that altered um, to yeah. be the length that you want it to be within reason. Um, but that's what you want to think of when you're thinking of length as well. And then let's talk about neckline. I think is something. That was gonna, yeah, that was going to be, if we didn't, if you didn't bring it up naturally, I was oh going to do that. Neckline is probably the one part of bridal fashion that is most overlooked. For, and, for us girlies, yes. Oh, yes. And yes. I wish it wasn't <laughs> because your neckline is what it is going to be in all of your photos, whereas yep. the bottom half of your dress is not necessarily. Not right? always, right. yeah. And so, um, I mean, of course, you have all of the dancing photos and your your portraits and stuff right, like yeah, that, yeah. but your neckline can really either accentuate or hide different areas. So mm -hmm. um, the universal neckline that looks good on anyone, whether you're big busted, short, little busted, whatever, um, is sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Sweetheart neckline is universally flattering. 
a square neckline, which is like what you have on today. <laughs> Emily, you're a model. Uh, yes. <laughs> right. Um, that is great for um, ladies who are a little bit more worried about their chests, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to be popping out. Um, but also for accentuating your shoulders as well. Yes. So um, if you if your shoulder line and your um, clavicles are something that you're really, like, you really like that a part of your body, do a square neckline or a boat neckline, which is kind of a draped neckline or oh, rounded. Yeah. Um, and then... Also, high necklines, which is what I'm wearing today, um, are really in style as well. Um, they are. Both in full fabric, like satin or something like that, um, usually with like a really pretty bow tie thing on mm-hmm. the back, or um, in sheer fabrics where it's a sweetheart or a, a square neckline and then the sheer fabric going up to the neck. Yeah. Um, and so that's also a great way for you to still feel covered, maybe for some of our more modest ladies or religious yeah. ceremonies, but um, still feel beautiful and make, especially for photos, <laughs> it adds yeah. more to it. Absolutely. When I know for me, for photo, anytime. I have a, a girly who's like, oh, this is my dress. I'm self-conscious of that little piece of yeah, arm fat right, right there. Right the, there. <laughs> the armpit. I'm like, okay. There are ways to hide it. If yep. you don't have straps or sleeves or yep. any type of swoop on the side, yep. there are ways that I can be intentional. But it does mean that I will have to take an extra minute or two right. out of like the whole day just making sure, adjusting things. Yep. And if I do point it out and that bothers you, like, I could try to be sneaky about it. But it's not that I'm being nitpicky. It's right. that I want you to look your yeah. best in photos. Right. Exactly. So that is, like, my only, like, hot take for a sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Is that little piece of yeah, arm Yeah, especially right if you're there. doing strapless sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that was so helpful. And I'm trying to think of all of the – And I would you say – You hit all the highlights. Yeah. Well, and, and to your point about, like – Trust your photographer and your planner to be able to kind of tuck those pieces in. Well, and, right? and just be honest with yeah. us, too. Oh, like, 100%. If yes. you if you tell me I want you to feel confident, mm-hmm. if you are like, no, actually, I am more worried about my chin than right. my arm, then right. I will, like, hyper-focus on your chin all day. Right. Which sounds weird. But, like, I, but it's I will true. make yeah. sure you, you look good. Mm-hmm. So no, the best I can. But, yeah, definitely having a dress that will – and maybe even a veil or cape or something yep. that helps with that right. distraction yep. like you were talking about, that is super crucial for photos. Absolutely. And I think something um, that one of my fantastic um, makeup artist friends, uh, hairstylist makeup artist friends t- taught me was that if you're insecure about a double chin or your face line or something like that, go with a hair piece of some kind because it draws the focus up rather than to this area here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I would even say like, if you don't want, if hair piece makes you feel like you have to put your hair up, Mm -hmm. you don't have to. Oh, absolutely. You like half up, half down. Oh yeah. Um, I personally love having, I'm a hair down person Mm -hmm. um, because it does help my face. I have a very round face. So Mm -hmm. it helps um, accentuate my jawline. Yep. You can still have some type of interest oh, yeah. that pulls the attention yeah. away. Even something small like um, a, a jeweled bobby pin, basically. Yeah. They have those or a jeweled um, clip of some kind does the same effect. Yeah. No, so that for is, some of our simpler girlies, too. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. Yep. So the other thing that I will mention for, like, photo speaking is I need something – of interest, like you've been saying, like adding jewels to your dress, adding um, something in, in your hair to kind of pull away from attention, having a veil or a cape or something like flowers, even if I can have something to have you interact with. A that shawl. Is, yeah, it could be anything yep. like on their arms. Just give me something to play around with. There's actually tricks you can do to kind of like you can have your arm straight at the camera, but if I have your veil, I can put it directly like in like in the middle of your arm, and it's already it's like yep. cut off. Exactly. It's like yep. half I, I cut your arm in half, visually. Mm-hmm. So little tricks like that are super important to like for photo speaking and obviously posing. 
I mean, oh no, we're sitting today, but like <laughs> sitting is not it. And we, right. I know that. And I will, you know, limit unless you have like mm-hmm. ideas that you want right. to do. And, but at the end of the day, I, I think all of this comes down to the last thing. And we waited last because it is the hardest and we have a lot yeah. to say. I know. So Lee, take it away. <laughs> Mindset is the last tip. You kind of hinted at the beginning. What, yeah. what do you want to share about mindset? So first thing that I really just want to drive home is that if you are not confident in who you are, not just how you look, but who you are, that is going to come across on your wedding day. And mm-hmm. nobody wants that. We, we love the confident bride. We want you to feel so gorgeous mm-hmm. and and handsome for the guys and like, handsome for the guys we want you to feel confident. absolutely absolutely so confidence is key and i've been talking a lot about the societal pressure that we have on us to look a certain way um, all the time but especially on our wedding day and it's so hard to break that mindset of sweating for the wedding, right? Yep. Hate, hate that term so much. Um, you know, it's perfectly fine if you want to get healthy, if you want to tone up, like as long as you're doing it for you, not just yep. for your wedding day. Yep. Right. Um, I think that there are weddings are so stressful, so stressful. Um, for the couple and your planner and your vendors will attempt to take as much off of you as possible. Yep. But at the end of the day, there's still so much stress that goes into weddings. And um, I think it was the knot had like a report last year that most brides actually gain five to 10 pounds ahead of their wedding Just because of stress. the stress. Yeah. And um I'll have to find that and send it to you. Watch, I'm going to be completely wrong on the publication. But I know I saw (laughs) a report about this. Um, And just give yourself grace. Mm. Give yourself grace. You don't have to love the body you're in, but you have to love yourself enough that you feel your best. And whatever that means for you, right? Um, so for me going into my wedding day, especially because I have been plus size my entire life, um, I spent a lot of time working on my mindset and focusing on accepting my body for what it was at that time. And Lord knows that is a journey that I am still on. Okay. Same. But, <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, but It really, I think there's so many great podcasts and um, Instagram accounts out there that are about body body positivity and accepting your body as it is. Um, Please, you do that research for yourself um, because it it not only helps you with your wedding day, but it helps you in life in general, right? Um, And then I think it's also, again, about make sure that the people that are around you that who are closest to you throughout this wedding journey are there to hype you up. Mm -hmm. Keep all the negative Nellies to the side. (laughs) Okay. Just, I know it's hard to be at your wedding anyways. Like, why are you (laughs) inviting them? Don't invite them. I mean, sometimes they're relatives that you just can't avoid. Okay. okay? (laughs) But seriously, keep, keep those, keep the people who are closest to you throughout this journey. Um, you're, your maid of honor, matron of honor, your best man, whoever it may be that is standing with you the entire time, make sure that they are there and they are hyping you up and that they know that you're feeling insecure about something, right? Mm-hmm. Because those are the those people are the ones who are going to be like, you look so gorgeous. Like, don't even worry about it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to be the ones hyping you up, not only on your day, but throughout your entire journey. Yeah. Well, and just from a, a photographer perspective, yeah. like you hired me to take pictures of you on your wedding day. It's supposed to be one of the best days of your life. Right. And I could be 
I'm not saying I am. I could be <laughs> the best photographer in the world. You are. Oh, <laughs> You're one of them for sure. <laughs> I appreciate that. But I could literally be the best in the world. But if you don't love yourself yeah. in your in your attire, if you don't love everything, if you're not confident in who you are and what you're wearing, yeah. you're not going to like my photos. Mm -hmm. Again, I could be the best in the world and yep. it wouldn't matter because yep. you don't love yourself either in your body or in your dress. Yep. And just the mindset shift of, you know, I, I'm actually speaking to past Emily because mm -hmm. uh, when James and I first got married, I, again, I've been plus size my whole life and just accepting that and trying to get healthy before marriage and the hustle diet we've yeah. all, you know, I did try that. It, it, here I am. But, <laughs> and James loves me for who I am. Exactly. Um, and that's what it comes down to is yeah. the person you are marrying is marrying you as you are. Yes. Keep that in the back of your mind at all yeah. times. They're not trying to change you. And if they are, well, then that's a bigger conversation. Oh, that is a different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but they love you and they are marrying you as you are. Yeah. Just remember that. Because at the end yeah. of the day, um, and this is something Mallory always says, uh, and I just think it's so true. At the end of the day, what matters is that you and that special person are married. And that's it. The, nothing else matters that day. Yeah. That's what matters. Well, and to the point of like, like yes, that is all that matters. And don't don't spoil yeah. the future. Oh my gosh. Don't don't spoil the memories. Yes. That you could have because yeah. you don't like being in pictures. And again, yeah. I'm speaking to myself because I mm. took very little photos of me and James our first like few years of marriage. Yeah. And looking back on that time. When I thought I was, you know, really overweight and yeah. now I'm more and I'm like, if I could get back, man. Um, but having that time and and going back to seeing like the five photos I have of myself right. with my newlywed husband, I have like five. Right. And I, I kind of took that so away sad. from our kids. Yeah. And just thinking about like I've lost um, family in the last couple of years mm -hmm. and just seeing like even – like cameras are different back in the day, but like seeing the few photos that, you know, maybe even like my grandpa was in mm -hmm. and maybe because we didn't take that picture. Oh, cause I didn't like how he looked that day. Right. I took that potential memory away yeah. because I didn't allow myself the opportunity to show up yeah. as I am, accept who I am and just take the pictures. Yeah. Well, you know? and, and I think that point goes not just for our couples, right. But, for anyone who is in formal portraits at weddings, yeah. right? Do not be that person. Do not do not fight taking that photo because you are taking away that memory for future generations. And yeah. I'm sorry, but we're we're sitting in DAR, which is a lineage society, and we're all about family history here. Yeah. So uh what perfect message. Yeah. <laughs> Just the perfect place for this message. Yeah, Absolutely. no, literally. And, you know, to that point of, I, I, again, I do weddings all the time. I will always have that one person who's like, oh, can you trim off like right. 20 pounds? Yeah. And oh, can you remove this? Or yeah. just Photoshop me in skinnier. And I'm like, I get what you're saying. But it's, it's not about that. It's right. about the memory of what's happening today. You showing up as you are and just being yeah. confident in that mm -hmm. and yep. just allowing that moment to happen. Yes, absolutely. Just be in so many vendors will tell you this, but be in the moment. And as somebody who is a planner and on my wedding day, I was actually able to be in the moment, which I did not think I was going to be able to be because I'd be thinking through our logistics and stuff. That's the whole point of having a planner. And so right. I had handed everything off at that point to my team and knew that they were going to execute it. Um, and not just my, you know, Mallory and Alexa, but all of my vendors. I just knew yeah. that they were going to handle it. And it allowed me to be in the moment and a full circle, right? This is why you hire yep. good vendors and why you hire a planner. Amen. I don't I don't know of a better way to end this than than that right there. That was phenomenal. Well, it's a heavy topic, but I I feel like it's not talked about enough because we Absolutely. all try to hide yep. in the shadows. But mm -hmm. 
Um, thank you for being Yay. open enough to talk oh about it. I'm so passionate about this. Please, anyone who wants to talk about it, reach out to me. Yeah, I'm or me. So like, passionate about this. Happy to help. Send me dress <laughs> oh, options. Yeah, I'll sure. tell you, like, yay yep. nay. Like, yep. we what will to be, look for. We will be your your supportive aunties here. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Just, yeah. Just zoom us in. We'll, yep. we'll be right there. <laughs> New well, business idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll do what is what would it be? Bridesmaids bridal? for hire. Is yeah, one of them. yeah, bridal yeah, consultant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Really appreciate you. Oh, I'm so and excited. we have another episode coming up in a minute that you may want to watch. So, um, join us for the next time. And um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Emily. Bye, everyone. <laughs>